technique that's really um, bubbling back to the surface again right now. There's a lot of interest in the Aline's vintage techniques, and yes, it was 60 cents. And so what I did is I created a frame and I'm going to show you the before picture because I wanted a frame that I had in the studio. So here's a before picture. So you can use this technique that I'm going to show you how to do today on hard surfaces. So this is a wood frame. The fun thing is you can take all sorts of charms and string and embellishments or rhinestones like I did on this and you just glue them on in the pattern that you want. So this is a wood frame that I glued lots and lots of those rhinestones on. And remember, you're not going to see these uh, so because you're going to put foil over it. So it doesn't matter if they match at this point. This is actually a frame that I had made where I glued these on and then I sprayed everything gold. And it looked okay, but it wasn't exactly what I wanted. So I thought, oh, this will be perfect. So you remember that frame you just saw. This is what it looks like after. So this is the technique of the Aline's forged foil. And yes, you can use hot glue if you'd like to, to do the spots. And I had a, a whole bunch of rhinestones left over. So it, this gives you obviously a very, very textured technique. And on this one, I antiqued just in the center and left the outside edges um, unantiqued to give it a nice contrast. So what I want to do is I want to show you what you're going to need in order to do this technique. Uh, of course, I used Aline's Tacky Glue. This is the original Aline's Tacky Glue. And there are many other types of tacky, Aline's Tacky Glue available on the market right now, like a quick dry that I'm sure would work for this. Uh, technique, but because this was what we used for the original technique, it's kind of hard to break old habits. You do need a hard surface like a wood frame and just regular kitchen aluminum foil. So the first thing that you want to do is um, pick a charm or something to glue on. Buttons make great things to glue on. This is just a leaf charm. And so I glued that on and I let it dry. It doesn't have to dry completely, but you just need to be careful when you're putting your foil on because it could move around a little bit. So the next thing you want to do is take your piece of foil, and I cut it to about a one and a half to two times it, the size of what I'm covering. This is regular aluminum foil. You can use heavy-duty foil if you'd like to. You can also use the foil that you get at the florist shop. So this is just regular aluminum foil. Here's my hint. Do not put this into a ball. You're going to crinkle to the center and pull back out. I can't impress upon that enough. When I went to teach this at A.C. Moore's store in Greenville, North Carolina a few weeks ago, I had to stop so many people from crinkling it into a ball because if you do, you will never get it open. And if you do that, then when you try and get it back open, it will rip. Okay, so see that interesting texture that I'm getting there? So crinkle it more or less depending on what you want. Pull it back out so that it's somewhat smooth, but you want to see all of those crinkles. The next thing you're going to do is take your Aline's Tacky Glue, and you're going to use a lot of glue. So be very, very liberal and generous with that Tacky Glue. And um, I just use my fingers to spread it around because you want the entire surface covered with glue. You want glue over the top of that charm, cover your entire frame, box, whatever it is that you're doing with your Aline's Tacky Glue. Yes, all good crafters use our fingers. And the great thing with Aline's Tacky Glue is that it just rubs right off. Okay, so you have the entire top of that frame covered with your glue. I'm just going to grab a paper towel here or a wet wipe to get the excess off. Lay your foil down right over the top, and you can see that I still have a lot of crinkles in this, and I want that, especially when I'm working around this uh, charm right here, because I need that foil to come up and tuck around that. I'm going to take my scissors, and I'm going to 
just punch right into the center here and cut out to the corners. And that, of course, you're going to wrap the foil around. Now, you would want to put glue along the edges here and wrap this around and get that to glue in place. You know what's really fun about this small frame right here is it would look great on a scrapbook page. So same thing, apply, apply glue along the outside edge, cut this to about a half of an inch here and glue it down so it wraps along this edge. I know you can't see what I'm doing, but <laughs> so you want to glue that down. So I have one ready here and that I have um, glued down around to the back. And what I like to do is take a pencil or um, this is a highlighter pen and just rub because that burnishes those crinkles and creases right into that foil. It's a great look. Also, what you need to do is run it along the edge here too. So run your pencil or your highlighter, anything that's smooth along the edge, inside and outside that edge. Now, up in this corner here is that charm. And so I just keep pressing with my fingers. And you want that charm, of course, to pop up so that when it comes time to antique, you really can see it. So here is the, the frame now. The foil is completely glued on um, front and back. And I've pressed into my charm. Now what you want to do is antique it in order to get the original effect. You can take acrylic paint and mix it with a little bit of water and then brush it on. But I also found that um, these Tulip Big Fat fabric markers work really great and they come in all sorts of colors. Now this is black. So this is not a regular permanent marker. This is a Big Fat fabric marker and you want to make sure that you use that because you want to be able to wipe it back off. So you just scribble it on and then you wipe it back for your antiquing. Isn't that cool? Now depending on how dark that you want it, you can come back and let me go over this charm right here. So again, you can use acrylic paint, but I happened to be demoing one day and didn't have any paint, so I grabbed one of these markers to see if it would work, and it did. So that's how you create this effect. So you, you can see also that I'm just working a uh, section at a time and wiping back because I don't want it to dry until I have a chance to, to wipe it back. All right, so you just keep working and antiquing. You can see here, this is an interesting technique, um, an effect just with the foil if you want something shiny, but you can come in and antique this. Now, the frame that I showed you in the photo before is right here. So again, you can see how I have antiqued in this section, but I've left this the natural foil color. So you can use this vintage Aline's technique to create all sorts of interesting effects. Let me get my pen covered back up here. Now, what I wanted to show you next is how I took this technique and I applied it to glass. So let's see, here's three bottles that I have these are glass bottles that I did this same technique. This gives you a very interesting antique vintage glass mirrored glass effect. What I did on these is I antiqued them with gold paint instead of black. So let me give you a picture here that's a little bit closer. Let's see, a close up here. Let's bring this one down and display this file. So here's a close-up. So as I said, instead of the black paint to antique, I used Kim Gold from